You may be thinking, why did I buy these crusty shoes? They were most likely forgotten about, left in somebody's attic, and the polyurethane parts turned to literal dust. I start by unstitching the toe cap. This makes prep work go smooth. I then use a heat gun to warm up any old glue and midsole residue. I do the same process to the outsole and it comes off like butter. Here I'm using Dawn dish soap. It works extremely well on your soles. Don't be scared to use it. And I'm using wire brush because that's what works. Right here I'm going to prep the glue line. I'm using acetone so I can get up the residual midsole and the glue. You want a clean surface before you re-glue. These are custom aftermarket 1994 back tabs. These replacement midsoles are from a 2018 pair of Jordan Legacy 312s. And just as I thought, I ran into fitment issues. New midsoles have a different mold, so I have to result in using my Dremel to hope that I can get it to fit. It's a tedious process, but there's no way I can get the rubber soles to line up if I don't do this. Now it's time to remove the old paint on the midsole. I used acetone in a cotton ball, and fortunately it came off pretty quick. I'm happy because it fits near perfect. Now it's time to install my back tab. This is Bart Cement Infinity, and you want to hit every spot where you can make a contact. Let it cure for about five minutes, and then you stick it right on. This glue is made for plastics and vinyl, so it works extremely well with shoes. Now I glue the outsole to the midsole. You can see that shaving it really helped. It fit almost perfect. Now this is the most important step right here. I'm gluing the upper to the midsole. You want to make sure that it's not crooked when you install it. You also want to ensure that it adheres properly so you don't get any separations. So far so good, and now the last step is to paint. I'm using Angelus Leather Paint. This is perfect for midsoles. I like to paint last because the wet glue can discolor the paint. Now this is a really big project for a pretty special pair of shoes, so I'm really glad that I finished it because the shoes look clean. I started this at the end of middle school, so I was in eighth, eighth grade going into ninth grade, and my mom would take me to the thrift store like all the time. Fast forward a couple years later, I had a friend who was into restoring Jordans and he was showing me everything and I was like, oh wow, this is so cool. And then I bought my own paint that he used. Started my restoring while I was in high school. Just then on, like people were like, wow, you restored those? And then I kind of was thinking, you know what? This is, this is definitely something I could do. Like, I like doing this. I could sell these Jordans for $100 after I'm done. And then, you know, chain reaction. Bought them, sold them, bought two more pairs, did the same thing. And then I just kind of like would browse old forms and figure things out. The more I did it, the more I learned. It's very, very time consuming. I'd say like the average time to restore one pair of shoes just from the beginning to the end, I would say it takes like 10 hours. People like the idea that I do it because it's like upcycling. Like, yeah, my intention is not to upcycle, but I'm still doing it. I'm still upcycling. I'm still kind of saving things from going to the landfill. Everyone's buying the same shoes over and over and over again. What's why? Why can't there just be something out there to fix them, you know?